I've reviewed several Android Wear smartwatches, Tizen watches from Samsung, a Martian, Fitbits, but I had yet to give the Apple Watch a go. With the release of their Series 3 and my concurrent review of the iPhone 8 Plus, the 8, then the iPhone X, I thought it was a good time to give the Apple Watch a go and see what it has to offer. While it suffers from a caveat common to most smartwatches, the overall user experience is a lot of fun, I have to admit, and in true Apple fashion, it's refined and it's well integrated. I'm gonna start with that caveat because, well, it's common to almost all smartwatches. The caveat is battery life. You're going to expect only a day and a half max out of the Series 3 Apple Watch, and this is the one with GPS and cellular. I got around that though by working charge time into my morning routine. More on that in a bit. I will say that this is not by any stretch a deal breaker. The watch has far more strong points, so let's get to what those are. If you've read any of my previous coverage of smartwatches, you'll know that I'm a chronograph lover. I also have a love for large cases, 46 millimeters, 51 millimeters. I generally like them big, except when it comes to a smartwatch because I tend to sleep with them on. Apple's Series 3 smartwatch falls right into the sweet spot for me, being 42 millimeters and sitting very close to the wrist, unlike some smartwatches, which tend to have a much higher profile. As much as I love my round body watches, I can actually understand why companies produce devices that are quadrilaterals. You see, information just seems to present better on something square or rectangular. That said, I've never been a big fan of square smartwatches, but I have to say that the rounded edges of Apple's rectangle actually have a refined appearance, which I find aesthetically pleasing sitting on my wrist. That pleasantry complemented by a beautiful 312 by 390 pixel OLED display pushing about 1000 nits of brightness. Colors are vivid, text is reasonably readable, and everything is visible outdoors in direct sunlight. Now, depending on which model you buy, you'll get either Apple's Ion X hardened glass or Sapphire Crystal. That comes with the stainless steel bodies. The rest of the hardware is actually functional and refined as well. The rotating crown and recent apps or dock buttons on the side watch help you easily navigate watch OS and the splash of red on the crown adds just the right amount of flair to the space gray model I'm reviewing. This is the aluminum version and in the couple months I've had the watch, my greatest fear, which is scratching the finish, hasn't happened. Matter of fact, I've asked some of my Apple diehard coworkers who've had series one or series two space gray aluminum models how they've held up, and no one has produced a device with scratch-based discolorations, which bodes well for the aesthetic durability of the devices. Being an Apple product, there are plenty of choices for cases and bands for the Apple Watch. Thankfully, band replacement is quite simple. You just press a button on the underside of the watch, slide the band out of the body, and you're good to go. Just grab your new band, slide it into the housing, you'll feel a click when it's seated properly, then go about your business. Apple sent me two bands to test out in addition to the one which came with the watch. Off the bat, I'm gonna say that I wasn't a fan of the stock floral elastomer band that came with the watch. It didn't breathe and I didn't care too much for the tuck and pin connection. It's quite secure, which is exactly what you actually want in a sports watch, but it was a pain to put on. The other option Apple sent was a tuck and pin, but it was the Nike Plus band, which has, uh, as you can see, these holes in it and it's much more comfortable because it breathes. My favorite band actually that Apple supplied is the Dark Olive uh, Sport Loop. Made from nylon, it actually fastens with hook and loop, or as we call it, Velcro, and it never came loose during intense workouts where I was performing dynamic movements. And when I was doing like heavy things, deadlifts, bench press, bent over rows, or move the watch further up my arm as I put on you know, wrist wraps or something like that. It actually sat right where it was supposed to and didn't move around and it was still comfortable. One of my biggest complaints about smartwatches has been the level of water resistance and Apple has that somewhat covered. While there's no IP rating, Apple does provide a device which is rated at 50 meters of water resistance for fresh and salt water immersion, but you're gonna wanna stay out of the shower with it according to the warnings on their product pages. 
I never shower with my watch on, so personally that's a non-issue. And speaking of showers, I tackle that battery life issue that I talked about earlier by charging while I'm in the shower. For all it does, respective of other smartwatches, the battery life is actually pretty darn strong, but charging daily, really not ideal for a watch. That said, I haven't missed a beat by taking the watch off, like I said, when I shower. Actually, it's when I get up in the morning before I shower and leaving it on the charger until after I've oiled up the beard and put on a little lotion. Well, coconut oil, actually. Um, and once my beard and I are moisturized, TMI, I know, I put the watch on. And in two months I've had the watch, I've had no issue with it dying in the middle of the day, no matter how heavy the use, even on long days, late at night, I've had plenty battery life left with no fear of walking around with a dead watch, which can't tell time. I've had that happen before with a smart watch and I kind of felt like a dork walking around with a watch on my arm, which couldn't even tell time. Not charging during my shower time in the morning, the most time I've gotten out of the watch is a day and a half. And that pretty much sums up the Apple Watch hardware experience for me. It's refined, it's functional, the microphones, the speakers, it's easy and it's comfortable with enough color to have a bit of pop without being visually overwhelming. And if you are into the visual overwhelming, into the loud, there are tons of bands out there online to buy to uh, fire up your style if that's what you're into. Now let's take a brief look at Watch OS 4 because it really is the software that makes or breaks the smartwatch experience. And having used Android Wear, Google Fit, Fitbit, the Fitbit app, Samsung's Tizen, S Health, and some of the Pebble apps when they were a thing, I can honestly say that Watch OS, the Apple Watch iOS app, Activities app, and Apple Health are my favorite overall OS experience on a smartwatch so far. Fitbit does have them beat in the community aspect to the fitness experience and those built-in personal trainer features, but overall, Watch OS and its supporting apps have been absolutely delightful. Notifications are easy to get through and actionable, highly actionable. Apps are easily accessible in an interface that before I used it, I thought, really? You want me to select an app from this nebulous blob of free-floating shortcuts? Nah, son. But in daily use, I found that the app selection screen actually works quite well for me. And the ability to place your most frequently used app in one place or use that one place as the most recent apps works quite well. The other element I found worked quite well was the way Apple presents information on the watch with the circle design elements. It took some getting used to at first, but I've come to enjoy it and appreciate developers like those who make the AutoSleep app who stayed consistent with that circular design language. This would actually be an ideal way to present information on round body watches that other manufacturers make, in my opinion. In light of iOS, I have to give kudos to Apple for the deep levels of customization found in Watch OS 4. All the custom watch faces, along with the ability to add multiple complications and customize those complications, are a powerful way to ensure that every user has something that meets their wants and needs in terms of accessing the data most important to them in a manner which is intuitive and efficient. For those that don't know, complications are those little regions on a watch face which present extra info beyond the time, or in this case, are shortcuts to other functionality on the watch. Beyond just the tight integration with Apple's own apps like Messages, Mail, the phone, many developers have created iOS apps with tight watch OS 4 integration. I used AutoSleep, Hours Tracker, Strong, and MyFitnessPal, and actually Mint. And I was completely satisfied with how well the watch component of each app integrated with the full mobile app. These apps, the watch OS app, they were all intuitive, easy to navigate, and had just enough features of the full app to be functional in a way that is efficient without including so much that it's overwhelming on the watch. Apple Pay works well, and the security features of the watch, which recognize when you've taken it off and actually lock the watch, requiring a passcode to get back into the watch, very smart and quite secure. The only real glitch I experienced in my time using the watch was during workouts. From time to time during intense activity, I'd actually lose contact and you'd see the area with the heart rate, it would actually just have two hyphens. 
indicating that there was no heart rate being recorded at that moment. But looking at the graph in the activity app and on the health app, the stats recorded were actually consistent. So the times I lost contact didn't seem to have a great effect on the overall metrics from my workout, the heart rate. While talking metrics, it's also important for me to note that one of the selling points of the Apple Watch lies in the Apple joiner effect. That's kind of what I call all the businesses who will quickly jump on supporting Apple products and services because of the company's mind share, their cultural impact once they've decided to do something. To wit, everything I use seems to be able to connect to Apple Health. I have type 2 diabetes and I use a glucose monitor, the One Touch Vario Flex, to check my blood sugar a couple times a day. I also use the Yunmai scale, the smart scale, to track weight and body fat percentage, and both my blood glucose monitor and the scale connect with Apple Health, allowing me to look at all my data in one place. On the other side, the apps for those products support two-way sync with Apple Health, as does the MyFitnessPal app. I can see my calories, macros, all that stuff in Apple and in my fitness pal. And in the latter, I can actually see my workout calorie expenditures and how they affect my calorie intake and total net calories expended on a daily basis. And when you're trying to lose a little weight, that's real important. This interoperability between products and services makes life easier when you're really trying to watch what you eat. And in my case, get your A1C down so you can kick diabetes butt. So that's the Apple Watch with Watch OS 4. I have to say, it has been a delightful experience. It's been one of the best smart watch experiences I've had out of all the smart watches I've tried. Apple really has put a lot into the integration and into the development, whereas some of their competitors have somewhat stalled out in how they've developed and continued to push the envelope where app watch integration is tight. Um, you can't go wrong, in my opinion, with this if you're already an iOS user. Of course, if you're using anything else but that, you're kind of out of luck. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in the video, please leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them. As always, thank you for watching.